Hello and welcome to my tropical style garden here in the UK. It's the 11th of November today and we are due our probably first frost of the year tonight. Minus one Celsius is what we're given. So I thought I'd do a little tour of the garden but mainly concentrating on the plants that I think look really good at this year time of year. For that, they will mainly be evergreens with some sort of architectural shape or stature or winter flowering or something that just looks good at this time of year and tends to carry on through the winter looking really good if the winters aren't silly um, cold. So let's get on with it. So I'm going to start with Mahonia Soft Caress. It is a hardy evergreen that produces these yellow flowers in autumn time. Um, it is a non-spiky Mahonia, the foliage, hence why it's called Soft Caress. Um, it's quite delicate and fern-like. There's also a, another one called Sweet Winter that is very similar, but is also really sort of architectural and looks good at this time of year. Now, I grow this plant in this spot, which is in full sun. I also grow it in semi-shade and also a really quite shady spot. And they all pretty much do as well as each other. I would say the ones in semi-shade probably, in my opinion, are the, do the best. Um, they get enough sun that it promotes good growth but also, if you can get real hot summers with these, the leaves can yellow a bit if you're not sort of keeping um, on top of the watering. But really is just a tough plant that pretty much looks good all year round. And even now, as I'm saying this, the pollinators are there feeding away mid-November. So... I tend to have, I probably have about four or five in my garden. I do like to repeat plant throughout my garden. It brings sort of balance to it. And yeah, most definitely one of the plants that I would grow for that hardy sort of backbone that gives you interest all year round and especially in autumn, Mahonia Soft Caress and also Mahonia Sweet Winter. So next I'm gonna talk about Fat Sears. I probably grow about five different varieties in my garden here in the UK and um, some varying from Fatsia polycarpa, like this needham form to the right, um, the spider's webs, the Fatsia variegata. I also have a Fatsia annalise, which I'll show in a moment. The variegation is also known as Fatsia camouflage now. Um, that's what it's mainly sold as, but looks really good at this time of year, especially when flowering. Um, really top plant. So at this time of year, they will produce these flower umbels on the top. These will be killed back if the frosts get to them, you might be all right with a light frost. If the frosts don't get them and you have a mild winter, they will then slowly turn to berry form, which is green and then will slowly go black by the end of winter. And at that point, if you wanted to try and grow some of these from seed, that's when they'd be ready to try and um, germinate. So here in this border, I have another couple of fat sears next to each other the variegata one which the um, white tones to the variegation help brighten up dark spots but also this fat sear polycarpa edward needham form so the edward needham form is basically named after the plant hunter edward needham who i believe first brought the plants into the uk um, they are mainly seed grown so there can be some natural variation 
in the leaf shape compared to the fat sea of polycarpa green fingers which is mainly which is pretty much grown from tissue culture so they will be quite consistently um the same type of plant i prefer the edward needham form slightly there is nothing really in it but i just have always found it really good for me they've been hardy they do look terrible when it gets to minus two minus three celsius and they all droop down but as soon as it, the temperatures get above sort of zero they slowly start recovering um top top plant especially for a shady border in a tropical style garden so next i'm going to talk about nandina domestica i really can't get good video footage of this but it's a very very good plant for all year interest this new growth comes out bright red and then as autumn time gets here it gets these berries which are just starting to turn red now but once they are red from down the bottom of my garden they really do stand out the berries on this plant you can sort of they're almost like having that bit of color that you're losing from the flowers in autumn time so there's quite a few different versions of nandina you can get a limelight one which will give you bright green foliage and you can also get variegated ones which in a shadier spot will give you that sort of extra bit of brightness and interest in the sort of late months when you're sort of losing all that color and interest you're gaining it from these extra plants so nandina domestica plant two or three um for me this one's in semi well semi shade the top of the plant does get quite a bit of sun but absolutely needs no work whatsoever um yeah i would definitely include it in a tropical style garden trachycarpus wagnerianus the stiffer leafed form also known as the waggy pretty much for me especially when smaller um about the best architectural looking plant especially as the frost come and winter gets there it keeps its shape it keeps its form as the frost touch the leaves it almost just glistens and when everything is sort of on its way down looking really bad get two or three of these plants in your garden they are quite slow growing but for that architectural shape they give and that all year interest pretty much is would be there as one of my number one plants that I would plant in any tropical style garden. So next I'm going to talk about Akubas and this one is only a small one planted last was it this year yeah um, Akuba Razan so it's just an plain green non-variegated akuba it's a sort of mid-sized shrub and it just looks almost christmasy because it's got these holly type shaped leaves it does fit in with that sort of autumn christmas type feel but also looks really good amongst tropical foliage so if you get the female ones you'll know because they'll probably have the red berries on them if you're buying them this sort of time of um, year. And that almost looks even more sort of Christmassy holly type. So yeah, not a wow plant, but definitely one you can fit in the border to keep that little bit of interest all year round. Plus you've got the other Akubas. There's quite a few different varieties now. Um, some different leaf shapes. Um, more elongated, more variegated. So if you go to keep your eye out for a few more of the specialist nurseries, you may find, you know, something that really suits your garden for this time of year and gives you that extra bit of interest. So next there's Schefflera's. This one is Schefflera rhododendrifolia. Um, I have two of these planted in the garden. The other one is bigger than this and is sort of split and become sort of free stemmed 
Um, really hardy. I've not had no problem in my garden since I've planted them. Um, if you do get a really severe winter, it may cut some of the top growth off, but should grow further down. Mine, because of last winter, did damage some of the top growth and it's still there, but it's encouraged a lot more of these side shoots further down the stem, which I am trying to propagate as these are quite hard to get hold of now in the UK. Um, and I do think it's one of them plants that I'd love to see more people grow. I tend to find that a bit like fat seers, if the leaf growth is out of direct sun, you tend to slightly get these bigger, better looking leaves. But realistically, you know, they can cope with quite a bit of sun. But if you can give them that bit of shade, I think they look a healthier plant. So this one is starting to produce berries as well. Whether I get any seed from it, we'll wait and see. Depends if the frost does any damage. But for me, this one, I did used to have a large Sheffalera Taiwaniana as well. But when we had some work done on the house, I did transplant it to a different border. It didn't like being transplanted, never really recovered, and I lost that. I do now have a couple of smaller ones in pots, which are gonna go, at least one of them will get planted into my border next year, as they're also a top plant for that sort of autumn, winter interest. It's the sort of palmate leaf shape that just, I don't know, maybe gives you that snowflake vibe when it's covered in frost, it looks really, really good. So another plant that I think looks really good at this time of year. This one is Brachioglottis. I can't remember the full name. I will try and put that up on the screen if I can find it. Um, it has these small silvery type leaves. You wouldn't normally probably think about this in a tropical style garden. It could easily just be used in a cottage style garden. But for me, autumn and winter interest if you can have silver foliage with that frosted look especially against dark foliage of things like hookahs and dark leaf plants it just makes it pop out it makes it look sort of there's good contrast there there's good color there and in the summer it does produce yellow flowers which can sort of tie in with that warm sort of tropical colors that most of us use in our gardens um, free draining soil give it plenty of sun it's hardy for me i do have to trim it back a bit keep it pruned in spring just to keep it off these paths but um yeah not a plant that would normally be used probably in tropical style gardens but if you're trying to get a garden that keeps that interest, like me, throughout the whole year, then it can fill a space. So a good one I like to use for my ground covering layer is Carex. And this one is Carex Everillo. It's a, I've mentioned it a few times on my channel. I love it. It's a lime green, evergreen, hardy grass that does well in sort of shady, semi-shade locations. Um, unless you let it really dry out, it's just an easy plant. And again, like I've said on other plants, it just brightens up on a, the garden up on a dark, dull, dreary day. So here we have in a pot, a yucca estrata. Um, also, I think this plant looks really good all year round very architectural very stiff leafed um very hardy especially in full sun in really free draining soil mine here is in a pot um which they do very, really well in but ideally if you could put them in a raised bed so the drainage is really good um plenty of grit then 
they'll just look good pretty much all year round hardly any work and yeah like I said that silver foliage especially near the end of the season just looks so good almost like you know it's November fireworks so it wasn't one of my normal tour videos where I just walk around and say what I see but um, I wanted to point out some plants for anyone new to this that's trying to gain that winter interest um, some plants that I've grown for many years now in general and think that look good all year round if anyone wants to leave any comments of any of us that they think that look really good at this time of year please do so and um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon